Don't miss this year's AUVSI Exponential in Orlando, Florida on April 25th through the 28th. It's the largest global gathering for the drone and uncrewed systems industry, and you're going to want to be a part of it. Go to exponential.org for more information and to register. 90% of the U.S. population lives within 10 miles of Walmart. And with 4,700 Walmarts, what you basically have are 4,700 distribution centers located right in the middle of the neighborhoods with a custom list of SKUs that are basically appropriate for the buyers around them. You're listening to the Drone Radio Show podcast, the show about drones and the people who use them for business, fun and research. Hosted by Randy Goers. Hello, everyone. This is Randy Goers, and welcome to the Drone Radio Show podcast, episode 356. How does drone technology deliver value? For that question, we head to Virginia Beach to talk with Tom Walker, founder and CEO of DroneUp. DroneUp is the leading complete drone services provider, transforming businesses and government organizations with drone technology solutions. A short list of DroneUp's diverse suite of products includes flight services, data analysis, training, drone delivery, and much more. Recognized as a U.S. industry pioneer with patented mobile app technology and a commitment to research and development, DroneUp fuels invention and application across private and public sectors. With its people, services, and innovative solutions, the company delivers on operational challenges with efficiency, reliability, and safety. Tom is a former military officer and a recognized pioneer in military and government digital reform. He has also served as an advisor to the White House on innovative technologies and their impact on the emerging workforce. The data from his research, combined with his military search and rescue experience, led to the creation of DroneUp. Since starting DroneUp in 2016, the company has continued to innovate and expand its portfolio of drone operations, to where today it is a complete drone services provider. In this episode of the Drone Radio Show, Tom talks about DroneUp's drone delivery service for Walmart and how companies can add value through UAS innovation. We'll also talk about Exponential 2022, scheduled for April 25th through the 28th, where Tom will be delivering a keynote address. But before we hear from Tom, I want to thank those of you who are supporting my funding campaign. Whether it's a dollar, $100, or much more, you can help defray the cost of production and keep the podcast going and growing. Go to DroneRadioShow.com slash donate. And by the way, if you have a great story on the use of drones that you'd like to share in a podcast, contact me at Randy at DroneRadioShow.com. So let's learn how DroneUp uses drone technology to innovate and provide value. Let's pick up the interview where I asked Tom to introduce himself. I am uh, Tom Walker. I am the founder and CEO of DroneUp. Tom, can you give us a brief overview of DroneUp? DroneUp is an unmanned aviation technology and services company, both developing uh, new and innovative technologies to both provide services and also uh, provide uh, last mile delivery support. How long has the company been in operation? We were founded in 2016. That's six years. That's a long time in this industry. And it seems like yesterday. It's amazing. What are some of the key milestones that define the company? Well, I think one of the key things is, is we started in services, understanding that there was going to be a role for drones and aerial data collection and infrastructure and and public safety. And then we began to really kind of expand and develop our technologies, our software and, and, and supporting technologies. Obviously, when the pandemic hit, we pivoted a little bit into delivery. I say a little bit into delivery because once we started exploring delivery platforms, delivering technologies, we kind of went all in. And uh, now, because of our recent investment from Walmart and partnership with Walmart, we are launching delivery operations across the country, 
really kind of testing and proving out the viability of drones and the role that they play in the last mile ecosystem. So has DroneUp become an actual provider of delivery services? That's correct. We both uh, provide the platforms, the operators and the technologies. In addition to the kind of uh, aerial technologies, the delivery mechanisms and those tools, we recently acquired AirMap. That gives us a capability to also manage the airspace and deconflict the airspace around where we're doing delivery operations. So we have three locations now that we're doing delivery in Northwest Arkansas. We'll be expanding that across the country uh, in the coming year. And uh, we're pretty excited about it. It's been well-received. Consumer uh, adoption has been great. Uh, And we're very proud of the partnership with Walmart that's allowing us to do this. How is the last mile delivery and customer fulfillment handled? So customers can go on and place an order on an app. We have about, uh, it's at one store, for example, we have about 8,000 SKUs. At another location in Northwest Arkansas, at store 100, we have about 18,000 SKUs. They can order from that. The product is then taken off the shelf, brought to the hub where it's put into a uh, package uh, that is appropriate for delivery. The homeowner is notified that we're en route to please clear the area. A drone flies in a way that minimizes flight over people and moving vehicles to the home and delivers from about 80 feet once we've cleared the area and gently sets the package on the ground in the back porch and then uh, returns back to the hub. I'll tell you a couple of interesting tidbits on that. Our average delivery time right now is 27 minutes from order to delivery, which we think is kind of spectacular in the fact that it really is kind of breaking that mold of can we get sub 30 minute delivery we're proving that we can and the number one most ordered item is a hamburger helper when the drone hovers over the landing space is it up to the customer to make sure that all of the people are moved out of the area well we tell them we notify them that they have to be clear of the area and if the area is not clear that we will not deliver the package but we will use cameras we don't record or take any pictures but we will use downward facing cameras and other sensors to ensure that the area is clear of uh, people and animals. And so it's kind of a collaborative effort between both the homeowner and the uh, delivery operator. How do you handle visual line of sight? Or maybe I should ask, are you flying beyond visual line of sight? We're not going beyond visual line of sight. We maintain the drone in visual and we have kind of an interesting setup. If you haven't seen what we're doing, uh, you can go online and see it. So we have the operators are in what we call our air traffic control tower, our ATC. Their line of sight, they're at 36 feet in the air. So they've got kind of a high line of sight because we can deliver from as low as 80 or as high as 200 feet. That extended capability gives us a good line of sight. If we have to go far enough that that operator cannot maintain line of sight, then we do have a visual observer and a secondary RPIC who can uh, maintain. So we are operating under Part 107 and under line of sight rules. What have you learned so far after conducting these flights? I got to tell you, Randy, it's a great question. I don't know what book is thicker, our operations manual or our lessons learned manual. You know, one of the questions we get a lot is just how scalable is this? You know, you're only going out to a mile, mile and a half. You know, is that really going to be something that is going to be able to really be effective and scalable and impactful in terms of last mile? But I think the thing what we always emphasize and what I like to share with people is what we're getting the opportunity to do is innovate and iterate our technology very, very rapidly and develop communications protocols and processes, both processes in how we do business and processes in how we respond when things don't go appropriately, losing signal, for example, to the drone or suddenly a crowd of people that's in the standard route that we weren't expecting or anticipating. You know, we have learned so much. I can tell you, obviously, there have been no reportable incidents or they we would have reported them to the FAA. But there are things that happen on a regular basis that serve to help us improve our processes. And quite candidly, we like these things happening, these lessons and these learning opportunities to happen when we're in this shorter range, because we know over the next year or two, we're going to extend out much further. And I'd rather get all the bugs worked out right now. A 25-minute delivery time when you're in a pinch and don't want to jump into the car. I think that's a pretty good deal. Oh, you think about it. I mean, 
uh, diapers, uh, children's uh, Motrin. Those are the type of things that we see, especially, you know, we're doing 12 hour day delivery. So we're delivering from eight in the morning to eight at night, seven days a week. And, you know, it's interesting to see the difference in orders from that happen in the morning and those that happen in the evening. We call them sick trips. We know that somebody's uh, somebody's got a problem when they're ordering, uh, you know, children's Tylenol and diapers. And our goal is to make sure that that delivery gets priority because that's somebody who doesn't want to have to get in the vehicle and drive to get it. And we want to make it worth it to get it there quickly. What's the charge for the delivery? Well, right now, I think in Arkansas, we're charging $7 of delivery, which I think is pretty modest cost for, you know, sub 30 minute delivery. And obviously for the convenience of it, the thing our industry has to do is we've got to work towards affordable drone, what we call affordable drone delivery. Certainly the cost per delivery now is significantly higher than what we're charging, right? And that's the way with a lot of last mile delivery and rapid delivery options is you scale it up so that you have enough volume to begin to make that cost per delivery make sense. Um, at the same time, you're trying to, you know, innovate your technologies and your processes to reduce manpower cost and reduce other costs. We've got so many different things we're working on from our internal processes to robotics and automation to software improvement to drone platform. We've got three different drone platforms that are in development, one that's in use now, one that's going to be coming online in the next month or so. And then another one that's going to be coming on like later in Q2 of next year. The goal really is to take this opportunity to learn how to do it faster, better, and I hate to say cheaper, but at at a more reasonable and affordable cost. And we'll get there. It'll take a couple of years. You have a lot in your plate at Drone Up. Do you want to expand on any of those initiatives? With Walmart, we have an interesting opportunity. 90% of the U.S. population lives within 10 miles of Walmart. And with 4,700 Walmarts, what you basically have are 4,700 distribution centers located right in the middle of the neighborhoods with a custom list of SKUs that are basically appropriate for the buyers around them. So as we want to improve that process, we can work on making the drones faster, making the drones more efficient in power, making whatever aerial platform we're using, whether it's a quad, whether it's a biaxial quad, whether it's a helicopter, whether it's some form of a VTOL, we can work on all of that. But the other thing we have to work on to make this scalable is how do we automate getting that product off of the shelf and onto the drone? And so there are a lot of different things. And then the other thing that I'd like to point out is, you know, a lot of people in our industry want to say drones are it. They are the solution to the last mile. They are the answer to last mile. And the truth of the matter is we're humble enough that we recognize we are a piece of the last mile. You've got autonomous vehicles, you've got electric vehicles, you've got robots, you've got all these different kind of tools in the last mile tool belt. And and what really I think the most important thing, in addition to all that I just said, that's really going to have a big impact in the next two to three years is how do we bring those things together? How do we make them all collaborate and work in a hub and scope? Then how do we bring middle mile autonomy into that as well and make all of these kind of a a symbiotic relationship that makes last mile clean, fast and efficient and ultimately uh, saves the customer money and makes their life better. I want to turn to Exponential, which will be held in Orlando, Florida between April 25th through the 28th, you're going to be delivering a keynote at the show. What will you be talking about? Yeah, I'm excited about it because it's going to be a fireside chat. Our new board chairman, uh, Eric Grubman, will be joining me on stage. In some ways, the topic sounds like it's a topic that's been covered a lot. And it's really how innovation and technology add value and improve business across sectors. And what I'm excited about is I think over the years, there's been a lot of forecasting and speculation and and in some ways, aspirational speaking about how drones are going to make these changes. What we're really going to try to focus on is real world examples of what we've done and what we've seen and how they're really fundamentally having not just kind of a a single aspect, but how are they evolving supply chains? How are they saving and improving time and money? And how are they improving safety? And how are they actually 
changing business, not just improving it or, you know, the, the kind of this one little dimension of it, but kind of the multi-dimensional approach to how autonomy and drones are improving business and, and business sectors. Sounds exciting. I mean, your business alone is a great example of how the technology changes business operations, especially considering where you started. Can you comment on the arc of your own business over the past six years? People have been asking me lately, I always kind of get this, how would you describe the industry today? How would you describe the industry today? I get asked that. I think I've been asked that every year or twice a year since the industry started. And right now, I, I, the word I like to use is it's maturing. And I love that, right? Because you always hear them talk about we're a nascent industry, we're a nascent industry. But to put it into perspective with our company, in January of 21, we were 12 people. Today, we're 175 people. And by the end of the year, we're expected to be about 600 people. This year, we'll grow about 1,700%. And that is not from mass marketing. That is not from going out and just acquiring or, or trying things. These are actual now projects and customers that have embraced what we're doing, not just on the delivery side, but on the services side. And we're seeing just a rapid, almost hyperbolic growth and adoption. And on the delivery side, for example, you've got retail who now recognizes it's early in the delivery world, but it's necessary. You're seeing that in the medical communities. We've got medical projects. We got diagnostic projects. We've got construction projects. We've got major heavy machinery companies that are now using drones, both for collaborative efforts on the ground in terms of the machine work they're doing, but also using them as supply chain tools at the same time. I mean, it's there's so many things happening that are so just incredibly exciting. And the other big thing I'm seeing is up until I'd say about last year, the industry was having to go out and tell people how they should use it. And, you know, it was a lot more of customers calling and saying, okay, tell me about drones. Tell me how we might be able to use them. Now, when I say why I say maturing is now customers are calling us and going, here's what we want to do. Here's how we want to use the drone. Tell us how we do it safely and how we do it within the parameters of the current regulations. And that's very exciting because that demand is what we've been missing, I think, as an industry. And we're seeing it quite heavily now. What would you say have been the key factors behind the company's success? I got to say the pandemic was a very unfortunate and devastating event that was very positive for our company and I believe our industry. You know, we saw our biggest growth in the first year of the pandemic that we had seen. We grew more in the first year of the pandemic than we grew in the four years prior to the pandemic combined because of two things. And it's interesting because there was this weird kind of uh, amalgamation of things that came together to intersect at the same time. One was companies wanted to figure out how to use drones because they couldn't send their people out to do certain inspections. They were quarantined. They, they weren't essential workers. And suddenly there were people calling saying, okay, we want to do this type of inspection that previously we did with people, but we can't right now. And a lot of what we heard was, but don't think this is long term because as soon as we put our people back on it, we will. And we're like, OK, well, we'll try it anyway. Right. And so there was this sudden demand for drone services. Interestingly enough, a lot of these people who were laid off or put on, uh, you know, to work from home or whatever their situation was, suddenly they were going in and registering in our app as available pilots because they were sitting at home anyway, looking for something to do. So demand went up, but supply of operators also went up too. So it was kind of a, you know, it was almost like it was meant to be. And in many cases across the country, we were designated as essential workers because we were going out and doing inspections. And more importantly, we could do them without putting our people next to somebody, right? They could stand hundred feet away and do the inspection. So that drove that. And then you know, the other thing that happened is Walmart engaged us to do a test project delivering COVID test kits to homes in a contactless free manner using drones. And that was just wildly successful. Over a nine week period, we did deliveries in uh, Cheektowaga, New York, North Las Vegas and El Paso. And this was in the middle of the, the hottest part of the pandemic and some of the hottest areas of the country. You know, our goal over that nine week period was to do a couple hundred deliveries. And over that period, we did 1,295 deliveries into neighborhoods. 
flying 1,350 miles, 133 hours and 52 minutes of flight time, incident free. And I think that was kind of our moment. And I think others moment and certainly Walmart's moment to kind of realize this works and it can be done safely. And so both of those things, as I point out, were a result of the pandemic and it kind of exploded the services side and obviously exploded the delivery side. In addition to drone delivery, what other services is drone up focusing on? Yeah, so we're doing a lot of infrastructure inspections. We're doing a lot of facade inspections. We did, um, I can't remember the total number of square feet of facade, but we had not, you know, prior to this year, we had, or last year, we had not really done facade inspections of large commercial buildings. Another, I think, impact of the pandemic is these major facade inspections required people to go out, build, you know, scaffolding and everything else. And the workforce wasn't there. And, and because of the COVID, there, you know, there was a lot of other reasons. That exploded for us. I, I think that business was up over a thousand percent in the last half of the year over the first half of the year. And the first half of the year had been pretty big. But obviously, cell tower inspections, pavement inspections, roof inspections, all of those things that kind of triggered. And the important thing to point out is if you recall, I said a little earlier, there was this anticipation that once COVID began to quiet down a bit, that these companies would shift back. And our prediction that was that they weren't. And so far, we've only seen about 10% of that work that was done by humans that we replaced with drones has been shifted back to a uh, manned workforce. So it, it looks like we made a big dent in, in some of those, maybe, you know, those people that were a little hands off. Now we, the pandemic gave us an opportunity to penetrate those markets. Looking out into the future, what type of services might we see drones playing a role? I do believe that you're going to start to see a little more of the aerial platforms providing support for ground platforms. And, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. One of the projects that we're working on now, which I'm really excited about, actually, is collaborating with autonomous vehicles on the ground to both help optimize routing by collecting real-time aerial data, but also to be able to help them in situations where there may be a better way based on environmental conditions that, you know, that they can't detect in real time to be able to reroute and reconfigure delivery mechanisms and also to use those platforms that are in the air as communication platforms to help uh, secure communications and uh, extend communications, both with the autonomous infrastructure on the ground, but also uh, for first responder and emergency response activities. Going back to Exponential, what are you looking forward to most at this year's event? Well, I got to tell you, every time I get to go back to one of these conferences, it's just being back at one of these conferences, me real candid. I mean, it's nice to not have to sit on a Zoom, although you know, I, I think in some ways made us much more efficient in, in terms of being able to get things done. But I always say one of the key things I think our industry has to do, you've heard me say it before, is we've got to be more transparent with each other. We've got to see each other in the industry as partners and be willing to open our kimonos up and share what we've learned, both positive and negative. Don't try to sit on everything as though it's a, you know, it's a little proprietary secret because the reality is the more we share as an industry, the faster we grow as an industry and everybody enjoys that success. So I'm looking forward to hearing what other people are doing, sharing what we're doing, uh, seeing who is, else is out there in the industry. But more importantly, just getting back together with some colleagues that, you know, it's been two years since I've seen some of these people and we're all fighting the same battle in the same industry. And I, I just that we can get together, have a good conference and be productive. What advice would you give to attendees on how they can maximize the value in the experience of Exponential? You know, I'd say spend time on the floor, but more importantly, it's like us. If you have an idea or if you have a suggestion or you want to be a part of what we're doing, please come talk to us. We're looking for partners. We're looking for people to join our team. We're looking for value in terms of relationships that we build there. But I would encourage people to attend some. There's some really cool breakout sessions that I've seen that they're talking about having. And I would just say, don't just go, certainly go and enjoy the floor, but get engaged with the, the people that are there, get engaged with the speakers and, and, and certainly come see me. I'd love to talk to you. Will Drone Up have a booth in the exhibit hall? We will. We'll have a pretty cool booth. I'm excited about it. It's got our new brand and actually just got a first glimpse at it this morning. And uh, we're going to be pretty much right dead center in the, in the middle of uh, the pavilion. And uh, I can tell you this, you won't be able to miss it. And for my final question, Tom, 
What message would you like to leave regarding the future of the drone industry? For many, many years, there have been optimists and pessimists. And interestingly enough, one of the things that I note is most of the pessimists I hear about our industry have been from within our industry, right? It's been us saying why we can't do something or why you know we can't be successful and all of these things, the why we can't. And the number one thing that I am telling people right now is look at what we are doing. Not we as drone up, certainly we as drone up, but we as an industry. And so many of those things that people said we wouldn't be able to do, we wouldn't be able to build sustainable drone services companies. We wouldn't be able to build drone products in the United States that can compete with foreign made drones, that we wouldn't be able to begin to extend beyond visual line of sight. All of those things that everybody said we couldn't do, we're doing. And so we need to stop talking about what we can't do and why we can't do it. And it's time that we start figuring out what's the next thing we are going to do. And then we need to go and do it. That's it for episode 356 of the Drone Radio Show. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Tom Walker of DroneUp. I want to thank Tom for taking the time to speak with me. If you want to learn more about DroneUp or want to connect with Tom, check out the website at DroneUp.com. And remember, on April 25th through the 28th, AUVSI will present Exponential 2022 in Orlando, Florida. It's the largest global gathering for the drone and uncrewed systems industry, and you're going to want to be a part of it. Go to exponential.org for more information and to register. If you like the drone radio show, please consider supporting the podcast with a small donation. The content is always free, but for as little as $1, you can help defray the cost of production. To donate, go to droneradioshow.com slash donate. And thanks for listening. Your support means a lot to me. And I hope you'll listen to more episodes of the Drone Radio Show podcast to hear how others are using drones for business, fun, and research. For the Drone Radio Show, I'm Randy Goers. This has been the Drone Radio Show podcast. More information on today's show can be found on our website at www.droneradioshow.com. If you're using drone technology for business, fun, or research, and would like to share your experience on the show, please visit our website and fill out a guest appearance application. And don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media channels.